Greetings, hi, hello. Welcome to a week in the life of a PhD student. My name is Maddie. I'm a fourth year PhD student in chemical engineering at Montana State University here in Bozeman, Montana. And this week I wanted to do a full week in my life as a PhD student just to give you a little bit more idea of what different days can look like for me doing my research. Uh, typically I just do single days in the life, but Things change a lot day to day, so I figure we'll expand it to a full week and maybe that'll give you a little bit better of an idea of what's happening. Today is actually Sunday, it's July 30th, and I almost never ever do things for my PhD on the weekends if it can be at all avoided. But this week is going to be kind of hectic, I think. I mean, every week is hectic, let's be honest. And so instead of doing my planning on Monday morning for the week, I'm just going to do a little bit of planning today just to feel a little bit more prepared for the week. But I'm not going to spend any longer than like 30 minutes. It's probably going to be more like five minutes, if I'm being honest, just doing a little bit of planning. So basically, Monday and Tuesday, I think are going to be dedicated towards sequencing but not actually doing the sequencing I'm still doing like PCR prep and stuff like that um, which I've never done before and so I have to schedule that around one of the other grad students in my lab who's our sequencing bioinformatics guru and so I'm kind of like following her schedule for Monday Tuesday it should all get done Monday but I'm gonna hold on to Tuesday just in case Wednesday I think I'm actually going to be doing a, a lab float day Thursday is a an experiment day I'm actually gonna get trained on how to use the cryo stage for the field emission scanning electron microscope <laughs> and then Friday right now is a flex day and it's probably gonna end up being a writing reading kind of tying up knots sort of day but I want to get all of those thoughts that I just rambled to you on paper paper so that's what we're gonna do right now Okay, so I'm really glad I actually did that because I basically scrapped an entire experiment. I was going to try and tie in doing an experiment with getting trained on that piece of equipment, but sitting here and like working through the week and everything and thinking about the timing, it's just not going to work to loop in an actual experiment with that training. And so instead of like having all these moving parts going, I'm actually just gonna do a tried and true method, a tried and true method of biofilm growth. Um, and have a really sturdy biofilm for doing that imaging training, but I'm glad that I sat here and did that. So I guess I will check in with you tomorrow. So after looking at my to-do list, I decided to start off with one quick, easy win, and that was submitting finance reports on Chrome River. I was able to get that done quite quickly and then made my way down to the lab to make some flasks with nutrient broth so that I could get some organisms inoculated. I accidentally put them in flasks that were way too small because I wanted to make 100 mils of volume and I put them in a 125 mil flask and this is me realizing it <laughs> and then I had to kind of shake them up and then pour them into 250 mil flasks. So it all worked out but it was just kind of frustrating at the moment. Then I 
went back up to my desk and started reading Writing Your Dissertation in 15 Minutes a Day. I've heard excellent things about this book and I figured it was about time to start reading it, considering the fact that I'm going into the fourth year of my PhD. Then it was lunchtime. Hello, so it's, oh my gosh, what time is it? 12.50, I just finished eating lunch. I watch a YouTube video at lunch pretty much every day. I spent some time reading, writing your, fifth, writing your dissertation 15 minutes a day. I just started that book. I'm gonna try and read like 20 minutes or so each day to just kind of work my way through it. And then I started working on some writing and reference and citation finding for a literature review that I'm wanting to do. Um, it's so hard when you just like, you know this fact and you just, you have to find something to back it up. And so you're just like mining through all of these papers, trying to find the one line that like supports this thing that you know, especially when it's something that's like pretty generally well known. It's pretty frustrating to have to find that because it's like, can't we just accept this as fact? Like humans are carbon based life forms. Like, do we have to like find a citation for that? Um, especially when it requires like digging back into stuff from like the 1960s, trying to find like the original source. Anyway, did that for a while. I found a handful of sources. Now, I want to inoculate these flasks really, really quick from stock um, for this experiment that I'm going to be doing. Oh, it's not an experiment. It's basically a biofilm that I'm growing in order to do my um, cryo stage training. So I want to get this done because my lab mate who is showing me how to do like PCR and all the sequencing bioinformatics stuff, um, she should be here somewhat soon so that we can get PCR2 going and then quantification and all that this afternoon. So got to get these inoculated. I'm hoping you can hear me, but it is like 4.45 right now. Let's see. 4.53 right now. I'm like halfway back to my car. Um, I did all that sequencing kind of prep stuff and then got back to my desk and had to write a few little emails, stuff like that. And now I'm heading home. I'll be home for like 30 minutes and then I gotta head out to go pick up a friend to go see the Barbie movie. Um, so yeah, today, I got done like literally everything that I could have hoped to get done. Um, it's great to get all the sequencing stuff done because that frees up tomorrow for a lot of other work because I had that on reserve in case today I did not get finished. Didn't get the amount of like DNA and stuff that I was hoping to. It's probably gonna be a huge fail when it comes to sequencing, which is a bummer, but you know, here we are. <laughs> At least it's done. Okay, so today is Tuesday. It is right now 10, 11 a.m. I did decide to take a late morning to get some errands done. I had to go pick up some tubes from a front house for the float tomorrow. I had to drop off stuff to the thrift store and I had to pick up my sewing machine. And that place didn't open till 10. So now I'm actually gonna drive like halfway to campus and park like halfway to campus. I don't wanna park at home because it's gonna be a really long walk. It'll be like a 20 minute walk so I wouldn't get in till like 11 or 10.30. Um, but I don't want to park at my normal place near campus because to leave at the end of the day, I have to like walk the wrong direction to go home. And I'd like to get some amount of walking in today because I didn't hit 10,000 steps yesterday because of not walking to work. Anyway, um, but today's Tuesday, like I said, I don't have anything that like is big to do today. Like there's some lab stuff that I need to do. Um, uh, which I'll do this morning like as soon as I can because I need to get a reactor going and I need to make some stuff in order to do that And then the rest of the day is just like whatever needs to get done. So um, That'll be like reading and writing essentially. So I don't even know if I'll stay on campus for that or if I'll go to like a coffee shop I'll probably stay on campus just to like not spend money um, Normally on Tuesdays I have my therapy appointment at 1 p.m. but I got an email this weekend that my counselor had an orthopedic injury that requires bed rest for a week so I was like oh no that's horrible I just parked I am going to walk to the office and then I will I guess catch you there the first thing when I got into the lab was check on my flasks from yesterday to see how they were looking if things actually grew right or not
All right, so I just checked my flasks that are shaking in there, and only one of them is turbid. The Pseudomonas aeruginosa is turbid, but the Rhodotrula mucilaginosa is not. And I was hoping to do two species, even just for this like trial. It's not even an experiment. Like I said, I'm just setting stuff up so I can get trained. I was hoping to do two species, so I still had a fungal representative and a bacterial representative. So I'll still inoculate with that really not turbid flask, actually. I might just inoculate from a frozen stock. I might just like take the whole frozen stock and throw it in the reactor. I think that's what I'm gonna do. But I still need to create the media, um, the medium <laughs> for the batch flow. So that's what I need to do ASAP, get that in the autoclave, get it cooled down so that I can then do that step. even a new month and I didn't mess it up on the first try. And then I transferred some notes about a training I did last week about coupon polishing into my lab notebook so that they're in a more permanent place rather than just these sticky notes. while since I've checked in. It doesn't seem like it to you guys because I don't think I filmed anything in between. But I got my media out of the autoclave and then I put it in this bucket. Um, and I put hot water in to start and then slowly decrease the temperature. So it should be good now. Should be cool enough. It's still a little bit warm, but it's not warm enough that it would kill any microbes. You obviously don't want to kill. Ah! <laughs> you don't want to kill what you're trying to grow. Um, so I can go put that now into the reactor, which I'm going to do. And then I think I might, I'm either going to go to a different building to do some reading or I'm just going to go sit outside. It's pretty nice outside if I find a shaded spot, but it's also really smoky. So smoke season has officially hit us. I think I'm guessing it's the combined fires in Idaho, Montana and uh, Canada, but We'll see. I'm having a little bit of a hard time focusing on my desk right now, which honestly tends to happen. I'm most productive in the mornings, which is like why it's sometimes hard and really not good for me to take these slow mornings and come in late. But, but I really needed to get that stuff done. And also last night was the first night of good sleep that I've gotten in a while because I wasn't getting good sleep with the dogs waking me up when I was house sitting. So I just needed to take a slow morning. But I was doing some writing for my review paper that I'm doing and just like making some notes and stuff. Noticed some gaps and so I have some papers that I need to read in order to write those gaps. So let's do this, get stuff inoculated and then go find somewhere to read. Also for those who are new here and have never watched a video with me before, um, whenever I'm in the lab, I'm never actually filming me working with microbes. Um, and if I, like, it's all contained. If, I, if I'm filming, things are contained. So I will film myself, like, filling up this reactor with the sterile media. But as soon as microbes become a thing, I stop filming, put away the camera, do the whole disinfectant, aseptic technique, everything like that. So just so that you know.
Like I said, I was going to, I ended up outside for just about 30, 40 minutes to read an article, get some fresh air, listen to the birds chirping, and then I had to go back inside because it was time to do what I call reference mining. And it's essentially reading a paper, looking at the references, going to those references, seeing what you can reference from those papers, really just tracking down the original citation that you should use and also uncovering more nuggets from within there. And I actually found a paper that I wanted to read and hopefully reference, but I don't have access to my university. So as a pro tip, I went and asked for a version of it on ResearchGate. So hopefully maybe by the end of the week, they get back to me. Right, so it's like 4.20 right now. So I was at work for like six hours today. I mean, I'm heading home. I have to meet someone at five to sell a plant. Um, but I did actually get a lot more done this afternoon than I felt like I was going to <laughs> based on my motivation levels. So I don't know. Um, but yeah, tomorrow I'll get a little bit of work done before rafting. We're not meeting till 10. Um, I'll probably go to a yoga class though, so I won't really get to the campus till like 8.30 or so. Someone just drove by me and this is Bozeman, so like people don't vlog themselves <laughs> like they do in other places. Um, but I'll get a little bit of stuff done in the morning and then to, probably not after the float. I'll probably go home. Thursday morning will be very productive. Thursday afternoon will be occupied by that training. And then Friday, again, I have nothing planned, so that should be pretty productive as well. So overall, it should be a pretty productive, girly week, hopefully. Good morning. Oh, my camera's about to die. Um, it's like, what time is it? It's 8.36 a.m. on Wednesday. I am all dressed and ready to go for this float. We are meeting at 10 at the dorm where all the RU students are hanging out, or staying. <laughs> um, I'm just gonna do a little bit of like desk work beforehand. I'm gonna go into the lab afterwards, so I did bring long pants to be able to go into the lab. Um, and then, what else did I have to say? Oh, last night when I was falling asleep, I realized I didn't talk to a single person yesterday. Like I talked to Matt and I briefly talked to the woman who I like picked up my sewing machine from, literally just being like, I'm here to pick up a sewing machine. Thanks, bye. But I didn't talk to a single person at work. Like, I, I, no, no words were exchanged when I was on campus. <laughs> and also I have, I'm just Ken stuck in my head from the Barbie movie. We're gonna go float the Madison River. It's a very slow, easy moving river um, near us. It's super smoky today and yesterday. There's big fires happening in Northwest Montana. So it's just smoky for the rest of the year, like I said, um, which is a huge bummer. But the only good thing about it is less likely to get sunburned because the smoke blocks out the sun a little bit. Um, yeah. I was just renaming the articles that I had saved in my good notes so that I knew what I was opening when I was going to open it rather than just the weird PDF downloaded version title. And then we headed to the river. <laughs> <laughs> this is the life. <laughs> all right, it is 3.30, back from floating. I'm on campus, dropped off all the students at the dorm, and now I need to head back into the lab for like literally five minutes just to connect some tubing and turn on a pump. And so I need to like to not park super far away from the building because I'm just gonna dash in but I don't know if there's gonna be like a place for me to park on like short-term 15-minute parking because they don't have very many of those spots so I just don't know what to do I'll probably just end up parking at my normal spot oh yeah baby made it all right everything is going we've got media dripping in through there we're all good to go 
Good morning, it is Thursday. It's like 8.45 right now or so. I'm almost to campus. Um, the plan for today, right now, the only thing actually on the list is cryo stage training at 1 p.m. Um, I just messaged my advisor. Normally we meet at 1 p.m. on Thursdays and I forgot to message him earlier in the week saying, hey, I have this training at 1 p.m. We need to reschedule our meeting. So that might happen this morning or it might happen tomorrow because I have nothing scheduled tomorrow, like I said. So I think this morning I'm just gonna be doing some reading, some writing, you know, as I have been um, this week. It's a very experiment light week this week, which is not as typical as it may seem based on this vlog. <laughs> but anyway, just figured I'd fill you in on some little bits and bobs. When I got to campus, I actually filled in on my iPad what I did today. I keep track of what I do most days just so that I know for reference in the future, making sure I'm actually making progress. It kind of feels good to be able to look back and see what I've done. So after doing that, I went back and started doing some more readings for articles again, since that's what I've been doing all week long. And then I actually was able to get a little bit of writing done before taking a break and picking up writing your dissertation in 15 minutes a day again. Okay, wanted to check in. It's 12.30 right now. Uh, my training is at 1 p.m. I'm not meeting with my advisor today. He suggested maybe a noon meeting, um, and then he remembered that he had a call today. So we're going to do a WebEx meeting tomorrow. Um, haven't been filming a whole lot today because it really is just like more of the same. It's been like answering emails, doing some reading, doing some writing, realizing I need to do a little bit more reading to fill the gaps of the writing just kind of rabbit holes along that. I'm feeling like quite fidgety at my desk, so I decided to come down to the lab a little bit earlier than needed. Um, I have to pull biofilm samples and they're just supposed to hang out in water to get rid of any salts before using the cryo stage. And I'm a little bit worried about that just because I don't want the cells to lice. I don't know how long they're gonna be hanging out in water for. I'm guessing they're gonna be in water for like an hour before we actually get going. I have no idea. So that's a little bit concerning because I don't want them to lice due to the osmotic differences, but I guess we'll find out what happens. Um, yeah, I don't really have much to add today. I did make the mistake. <laughs> I, sh I really need to get better about not checking my personal email so much during the day because I did check my personal email. I've been waiting on a couple packages that I ordered some things over the weekend. And you know, everyone gets obsessive about tracking their packages. Well, one got delivered today. It was supposed to get delivered yesterday. It was literally like near my house. It had the, like the live tracker thing and it didn't get delivered to my house. So it says it's delivered. And a lot of times that package say, say, packages say they're delivered to us. They're not actually, because we live in this like weird apartment that like the address like kind of exists, but it doesn't really, and like, anyway. So I, I want to know if it actually got delivered or not, uh, but I won't know for another few hours. I have no idea how long this training is going to take. The guy who's training me said he reserved the scope for me for one, from 1 to 5 p.m., so four hours. He also said that setup and takedown each take about 30 minutes. But like I said, I grew this biofilm specifically for this training. Like I don't actually need any images of this biofilm, like period. <laughs> so honestly, all I need to be shown is how to set it up, a little bit about how to use it. Like if there's any nuances to using the scope while using the cryo stage compared to a normal stage, because like I'm pretty good at FESEM. I'm pretty confident in my images that I can get uh, as long as my samples aren't charging. Um, with extra electrons. I, yeah, I'm getting into the nitty gritty a little bit too much right there. Um, but yeah, so I don't know for sure how long this is gonna take because my advisor was like, hey, like how long is it gonna take to a meet after? And I was like, I truly have no idea. But from 3.30 to 5 p.m., all of the RU students are doing their little poster session. So they all did like 10 week research stints with people in the center and then they're doing posters to talk about like the research that they did. And I would like to go to it just to kind of show support, learn some things. And also since I like hung out with a bunch of them yesterday on the float, it'd be kind of cool to like 
um, hear about their research and also give them that experience of sharing their research and scientific communication. Because I don't know how many people are actually going to go to the session. I'd imagine a decent amount. I don't know. Um, and then after that, go home. So that is the plan for the rest of the day. With my time now, I have about 30 minutes until I need to be up for my training. I think I'm going to, oh wow, there's like not even dishes to be put away. That's a rarity. Maybe I'll mop. Maybe I'll sweep and mop. Like that always needs to get done. I don't know. Definitely need to pull my biofilm samples, but yeah, I'm just having a, a hard time kind of focusing my brain because of how much reading and writing and stuff I've been doing instead of experiment stuff. Um, and that's just kind of how it is this week. But next week will be more experimenty. And also there's like two weeks until the semester starts, which is crazy. I'm also leaving right when the semester starts. So I have like two and a half weeks till I leave for, out of the country for like a week. And then I come back and I might be literally like two days later going to Yellowstone on a backpacking trip at the lab, coming back. And then another five days after that, like going on another backpacking trip for the lab. After that, come back, be in town for a few days. Then my mom is visiting. <laughs> September is a crazy month. August is kind of less crazy. The end of August is crazy. September is really crazy. And then hopefully it calms down from there. Yeah. So here I am just procrastinating. Always procrastinating. <laughs> So I take my little cooler with my little samples upstairs to go do my training. Look around, the guy's not there. Check my email, August 10th, not today, August 3rd. So that is so frustrating because I rearranged my whole week for this. I could have done an experiment. And now next week I need to run an actual experiment and also have biofilms to do my training with. So now I need to run upstairs and meet with my advisor because I texted him and was like, hey, I actually can meet today. So now we're doing a last minute WebEx meeting. I don't have time to be as angry about this as I want to be. I'll save that for later. Oh, these headphones. I know, one sec. Yeah. And I was like, I was, so I was going to do my training I get there, I'm like, where's where's my guy? And I check my email and the email was August 10th, not August 3rd. So I was off by a week. So <laughs> that's great. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, first order of business, what do you have any availability with what Tony sent? So I had a meeting with my advisor, my originally planned meeting. And then after that, I went and chatted with one of my friends about my debacle and upsetness and everything. And it's just so frustrating. Like I planned this week so well to work with that training. Doesn't matter. I'm just upset about the fact that I pushed off a week of experiments. I don't want to push off another week of experiments next week because that would be two lost weeks. So I have to do experiments anyway. And so in order to make that work, I think I just have to come in on Sunday to inoculate. It's not the biggest deal. It's just like kind of a bummer. And it also just means that next week it's going to be very hectic with this experiment because it's going to be a very like labor intensive, like sampling every six hours kind of thing. I'm hoping to run two reactors at once, especially since I missed a week that I could have been doing things. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, bummer, bummer, bummer. Um, but now I guess I'm just going to spend some time getting ready for that experiment next week and cleaning up from the reactor that I did run this week, even though I didn't need anything from it. And then at 3.30 is when the RU students are starting their poster thing. So I'll go over there. I'll probably just walk around for like 30 minutes or so, talk to a few of them and then head home for the day. So here we are. I guess the good news is I did get to meet with my advisor today instead of tomorrow. So tomorrow is still wide open. So I think what I might do 
for some funzy switch up of things is I think I might actually start the day out at a coffee shop and get some writing done at a coffee shop or the tea house or something and then um, come into the lab and do some lab work in the afternoon because I'm almost certain there's going to be stuff that I can't do today in the amount of time that I want to spend here. So that's my little treat to myself for being a screw up. That's a joke. All right, pro tip, always do a dance party. It makes you feel so much better, especially if it's to like slightly angsty music. Um, anyway, I got some stuff prepped for tomorrow, right here. Did some dishes, stuff like that. Um, so now I'm gonna go to that poster session for like 30, 45 minutes. I'm hoping there's snacks. Maybe, I doubt it, but a girl can hope. I don't wanna take my camera out because it is raining, but I'm walking home in the rain. I just, I don't wanna wait for the bus <laughs> and I don't wanna be there anymore because I just don't wanna get looped into conversations and get stuck there for a, a really long time. But the students who I talked to, most of them had really good posters and they all seemed like they enjoyed their summer, which is probably the most important part. And I got some good snacks. So yeah, time to go home. It is 4.07. So. That's a wrap on Thursday of this week. Good morning, it's Friday. Um, I'm walking to campus right now. I'm gonna go to International Coffee Traders, which is right next to campus, so that when I need to go into the lab, I'm just right there. And then also, one of my friends might be joining me, depending on how her meetings go this morning. But yeah, that's the plan. Just gonna do a few hours of computer work, writing, answering emails, reading, etc., and then go into the lab. And that's the that on that. Um, I'm wearing my cute little MSU sweatshirt that I got when I visited MSU as a high school student to see if I wanted to go here for college. So I'm gonna have my cute little like academic at the coffee shop next to the campus moment. That's the plan anyway. Also, I was feeling bougie this morning, and so I decided to actually do my makeup, which you absolutely cannot see right now. Hold on. Can you kind of see it a little bit better? Probably. But yeah, that's the plan. So I will catch you there. We'll see how brave I am when it comes to filming in public. I'm getting a little bit braver as time goes on. I'm getting to the point where I'm like, mm, don't care. <laughs> don't care what people think. Like, there were people on their porch back there and I just walked by them like this, but I don't know. <laughs> I'll try. <laughs> All right, I'm very backlit, but I grabbed my drink. I got a London Fog because coffee caffeine makes me really anxious <laughs> and I didn't want to have to deal with that. Um, but I have my spot next to the windows, a bunch of bright light, which is obviously why you cannot see me. And I'm going through emails. Okay, so it's like just shy of 11.30 and I'm heading to campus. I don't have a lunch with me, so I'm probably gonna end up having to leave campus again to get food. <laughs> um, but I got a decent amount done. Not as much as I would have liked to. I couldn't get my iPad to connect to the Wi-Fi, which was really annoying. But I got enough done. I planned out the timing and everything for my experiment next week, which felt good. Um, realized that the initial timing I was hoping to do was not going to work. So yeah, now I'm just heading to lab to go get all that stuff prepped.
made it into the lab and was making flasks again with media. And I did the exact same thing that I did earlier this week where I put 100 mils of volume into 125 mil flasks. So I had to decant some of that volume and autoclave it separately. I don't know why I made this mistake twice in a week when I've never made it before, but all is well. Then I had to go upstairs and grab some stocks from the cold room to make more medium. All right, so it is 12.35 right now. I'm just working on filter sterilizing that media that I just prepared and it should be done in literally like two minutes. And then I'm gonna go to lunch with a handful of friends. I don't know where we're going. I'm kind of feeling Tapa Montes, but we'll see what the group wants. Um, and then I'll come back and do more lab work after lunch. Right, so it is just after 3.30. I am about to call it a day. I did not get to film anything after I came back from lunch because there were people in the lab the whole time. We were chatting. One of the undergrads is going to Paris in a couple days, and so I was telling her all about my um, like suggestions, and she had questions for like what to do for sure, what to like maybe avoid, what I didn't feel was worth it, just like chatting about it. She's super excited, so it was kind of nice to chat with her about that. Um, and then in the meantime, I got all those tubes labeled. Oh, I guess I, I filmed that. That was on my phone, so I could be a little incognito about it. Um, and then I got a bunch of auger weighed out for Monday or Tuesday, probably Monday. So I can just add water and then they're all good to go. And I think that's, I think that's about all I have for you today at the end of this day. So. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this somewhat interesting, even though it was probably a little bit monotonous. It's kind of how it goes. <laughs> Next week is going to be a very, very busy experiment week. So it's kind of going to be the exact opposite of what it was for me this week, which is another reason I wanted to be sure to get all that writing in. Um, even though I didn't realize it was going to be so experiment heavy until Thursday when I realized I messed up the timing. It's fine. So yeah, anyway, thank you so much for watching. Leave any questions down below and I will see you in the next one. Bye.